An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Don't worry, this review contains no spoilers whatsoever. The Purge is a movie set in a dystopian future in which once a year, murder is legal for 12 hours. In this movie, the idea behind The Purge is a purging of the soul. To have one night a year in which our inner demons can be released, thus providing a cleansing of the soul. It also discourages crime the other 364 days of the year. It is a movie well worth watching because by the end of the movie, you are not left in a state of fear or anger or dread or anything negative. Instead, you are left in a state of compassion as the movie makes clear exactly how fucked this sort of thinking actually is. Facing and clearing one's inner demons is a process of facing ourselves internally. Introspection and figuring out exactly why it is we think and feel what we think and feel. This is a process that society has taught us all to avoid, and the process that this movie clearly shows is necessary and shows us the consequences of not doing it. Taking our own internal issues out on others only increases the level that we become more co-opted by these demons, like Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader. Just as history shows us over and over that war and hate only creates even more war and hate. If war and hate actually ever solved anything, then the problems of the world would have been solved thousands of years ago. As the sciences of biology, neurology, and psychology have long since proven, the default of human nature has neither a propensity towards good nor evil. When we are born, we have one and only one program installed. Survival through adapting to our environment through the process of learning to emulate that environment. A child raised in a malevolent environment will emulate that environment in order to adapt and survive. A child raised in a benevolent environment will emulate that environment in order to adapt and survive. There is no propensity whatsoever for good or evil, and the idea that good or evil is genetic is nothing more than a myth. To quote Regina from the TV series Once Upon a Time, evil is not born. It's made. The same can be said of good as well. The purge is a metaphor of what is happening in our society right now. It is about the very real consequences of our collective apathy as we live in an increasingly totalitarian society in which political correctness and neurotic protocols are favored and valued over human life. A society in which we should be loving people and using things, but instead, we love things and use people. Our current situation is creating a purge or cleansing of sorts. As we awaken to how weak-minded society has become, each of us as individuals is given a choice. Bill Hicks referred to it as the choice between fear and love. It might also be considered as a choice between living life and slowly committing suicide. For those who choose to live life, their examination of all of the suffering around them 
has inspired them to become a better person and to help make this world a better place as best they can. By way of a process of identifying and facing their own inner bullshit, integrating and clearing it, the result being, as Gandhi put it, being the change we want to create in the world. These people are setting examples of what reality can be like, and these examples run in direct opposition to everything society has told us is real and possible. For those who choose to be acquiescent and apathetic, a process of self-destruction begins to amplify and escalate. The more they become part of the problem, the more this process takes its toll on the person emotionally, mentally, and physically. They experience rapidly deteriorating health, which then leads to early death. Many of these people also work within our current governmental and societal infrastructure systems. So as we've been seeing clear evidence of, these systems are breaking down at a neck break pace, equal to the physical, mental, and emotional breakdowns of the people which are supposed to run these systems, but have put themselves in breach of trust. There are many people right now whom society deems as lazy, or people who are exploiting the system, but I challenge that idea. The system is morally bankrupt, and what many view as laziness is not laziness at all, but paralysis. Paralyzed by a state of hopelessness and feeling as if nothing they do matters. If you feel that nothing you do matters, then what incentive do you have to be productive or follow the rules of a society that you feel has clearly thrown you to the wolves? I personally had felt the exact same way for a very long time. I felt as if I was damned if I do and damned if I don't. So I asked myself, what does it actually matter what I do or don't do? I felt that I was just one tiny little individual swimming in a sea of hopelessness and that nothing I did could possibly have any effect on anything, like a dying leaf at the mercy of the blowing winds. I felt that I was existing within a heartless educational system living with parents who were every bit as mentally and emotionally damaged as I was, existing within a society based upon a system of slavery in which the American dream was nothing more than a delusional fairy tale told to children to get them to behave themselves for 12 years. I will tell you that at this point, I don't feel this way anymore, but please do not misunderstand my context. I firmly believe now more than ever that our current society and all of its systems are morally bankrupt and completely fucked beyond repair. So I'm not saying that my opinion has changed. I'm saying that how I feel about my opinion has changed. I don't feel as if I am damned if I do and damned if I don't. I don't feel hopeless or powerless. I don't feel as if I cannot nor do not make any real difference in this world. Once I hit rock bottom, the only direction for me to go was up. I had to contend with all of my addictions to the many belief systems that had been spoon-fed to me. The false view that being right was more important than being happy. The false view that appeasement and love were the same thing. The complete lie that difficulty and suffering was the only real reality when ease is just as real, and when we view things in terms of opportunity instead of burden, then we can grow and progress through challenges instead of suffering through psychosis. The lie that time was my enemy, which only served to make me disrespect my own pace of learning and become increasingly impatient, paranoid, and neurotic. The lie that stepping out of my comfort zone was dangerous, when the only place you can make any real progress is well outside of your comfort zone. The lie that mistakes made me weak, when in fact mistakes are a valid part of the process of how humans learn. A baby does not learn to walk in five seconds. It falls more than it walks, before it gets it right. The total crock of shit belief that not knowing makes us incapable of learning, when in truth it is the beginning point of obtaining knowledge and wisdom. The lie that our elders are somehow superior to us, when in fact the scientifically proven truth is simply that we become better and more efficient at something the longer we practice it. If someone has had decades more practice at being an arrogant, close-minded, apathetic, neurotic son of a bitch, then by God, they will be so much better at it than you are. There is so much BS that society has filled our heads with, and I had to contend with the fact that I had not merely been sold a lie, 
but that most of what I thought was real was in fact a complete crock. I had to have the courage to ask myself, what is real then, and go from there. This journey is a journey down a dark road. I'm not saying it's a bad road. It doesn't even have to be a scary road if you don't want it to be. I'm just saying it's a dark road. When you drive down a dark road, you can only see about 200 feet in front of you. This is because your car has headlights. You trust your headlights and you keep driving. You do not pull over to the side of the road in a state of terror. You trust your eyes and you trust your headlights. This is the journey through the darkness of not knowing. Make it a fun road trip. The news likes to spin and hype the stories of our world. They ignore all of the positives and exaggerate the negatives. This is because that is how they make money. They are not ministers of truth. They are spinners of fear and webs of lies in order to increase the amount of money that is in their checking accounts. Yes, it's true that there is a lot of really bad stuff going on in the world right now. It is not true that we can't do anything about it. Nor is it true that our governments, Jesus, Santa Claus, space aliens, or anyone else is going to save us or babysit our insecure egos as we sit there in denial of our true power and potential. As many things go from bad to worse, it is equally true that many other things are going from good to better. They are simply not reported on much because those stories do not make as much money. As our medical system sells us poisons as medications, as we have all seen those commercials where the side effects of the drugs are far worse than the conditions they supposedly treat, this has encouraged many people to learn more about health in their bodies and that we are becoming sick due to a lack of nutrition, not because it is supposedly natural or normal for people to be as sick as they are. As Common Core seeks to ruin the minds of America's youth, this has inspired those minds to reject the educational system while going online to study subjects independently. A system that has a boycott on critical thinking has only served to encourage the youth of this country to begin learning how to think critically. A criminal justice system so corrupted that it has literally become a system in which only criminals get any justice, especially those who work on Wall Street and for other major corporations, has inspired people to wake up learn more about how the system works, and to seek remedy rather than cry about it. The more we see a lack of compassion on behalf of those who have chosen a path of self-destruction, the more it has inspired compassion in those who might have otherwise remained complacent had they not witnessed the horrors. And yes, I said horrors, not whores, <laughs> just to clarify. The Purge is a movie which brings these realizations to light sticks them in your face and really gets you thinking. Being a better person makes the world better. It's not a cliche, but rather an often ignored bit of common sense. I'll say it another way. Putting fire out with water puts the fucking fire out. Gasoline won't do it. Sitting there bitching about it won't do it. Smashing your fist into the wall won't do it. Painting logs blue and writing the word water on them won't do it. Actually putting the fire out with water puts the fire out. That's not a cliche, it's just intelligence. The Purge is an eye-opening movie. It is, however, extremely violent, so don't watch it if you have a serious heart condition or something. But other than that, I would highly recommend it. It might very well just rattle your brain enough to spark some of that before-mentioned critical thinking.